Growing up, this character was one of my favorites. He just looked like a badass walking around with that camo paint on his face and those green tinted goggles over his head. This desert tater is dusty. Before we start, I do want to thank you for watching JLS Comics. Whether it's your first time here or you're back for more, don't forget to share this and subscribe so you don't miss all of our videos we make each week just like this one. So let's get on to the video. Dusty's government name is Ronald W. Tater, his last name of course being an anagram for Ron Rudat, figure designer at Hasbro. According to his file card, Ron was born in Las Vegas, Nevada. Living out in the desert oasis that is Sin City, Dusty had a great interest in the desert ecosystem and in fact he would be researching and studying the ecology of this environment all while repairing refrigerators and AC units. Not sure if it was Maytag or not, but if it was, he'd have plenty of time to study because the Maytags don't break down, at least that's what the commercial says. Also, it's nice to have the hot desert specialist working on cold units. So this is what he was doing while waiting for his pre-enlistment application for the G.I. Joe team to be approved. Once it was, Ron went through basic training at Fort Bliss in Texas. And while he is modest and cheerful, laid back and generally easygoing, Dusty is a fierce freaking warrior. Point him downrange and his inner toughness explodes outwards. According to his bio, Dusty's a survivalist, thriving off the desert which most others would consider barren and devoid of anything. He'll hunt and eat desert snakes and lizards, he can track and sneak up on enemies as if he were the desert sand itself. Also, Dusty's fluent in languages from desert-centric nations like Arabic, Kazakh. Dusty wears a Civil War Havelock, which is the hood that drapes from his helmet to protect his neck from the sun. It's dated, sure, but appropriate in a desert environment. He's also one of the first environmental specialist G.I. Joes, just like 1983's Arctic specialist Snowjob. Dusty quickly found himself with the G.I. Joes, and in his first mission was sent to the Middle East. He and Mainframe actually helped beat back an ambush by the tyrant Colonel Sharif, so they get a guy, a young kid named Rashid, who he doesn't like mainframe too much because he's a computer nerd and not a soldier. They have to head across the desert to find Terradrome hidden in an oil tank. Dusty takes out an entire patrol that was tracking them. They find the Terradrome, and once there, they uplink the drone's computer to Fort Wadsworth where the data is downloaded. Mission accomplished. Almost. They still have to escape and egress back across the country. The problem is Sharif's forces had them pinned down. Mainframe was able to hack a fire bat which makes strafing runs across Sharif's ground assets and so they're able to escape. In Special Missions 13, Dusty led a mission into Trusha Labismia. He was with Outback, Mangler, and Lightfoot but they were all captured. They all escaped, of course, with Dusty leading them back across the desert, and while he and Lightfoot escaped, Mangler was KIA. In Special Mission 25, he's out with the Tiger Force, which actually matched his Tiger Force action figure release. By issue 100, Dusty was one of the G.I. Joes defending the pit. The later version of the pit was in the middle of the desert, perfect for Dusty, and he was often in charge of perimeter security. In issue 113, during the Battle of Benzene, Dusty's friend Sneak Peek was killed, with Dusty right there. Dusty and Sneak Peek were so close, in fact, once he had gone home to visit Sneak Peek's family for Christmas, where he promised Sneak Peek's mom that he'd bring him back if anything ever happened to him. So in Benzene, when Sneak Peek fell, Dusty disobeyed orders and risked his own life to retrieve his fallen friend's body. A time after this, Dusty was on the team that defended Destro's Transcarpathian castle from Cobra, and it wasn't long after this where Dusty illegally went into the capital of Barovia to rescue Hawk and El. Jay. He, like many, remained on active duty until issue 155's decommissioning of the team. During what's now considered the non-canon time period of DDP and Image, Dusty ran the firing range. He fought in the next battle against the revived Serpentor, and then a later in a firefight in Badikistan. This is also when the Joe's ranks were cut down and Dusty was put on active reserve. So we get back to Homiverse and Dusty shows up again in issue 161 where he pops out of the dirt with Outback. M4 is drawn, flanking the vamp, returning with Gung Ho, Clutch, LJ, and the rescued Shuckles. So once again here, he's on perimeter security. A few issues later, Dusty actually confronts Sneak Peek, who is mysteriously back. Dusty was there, of course, and was killed, and he wants to know, how is he here? He's like, I recovered your body. You were dead. How are you here? But tells him that he doesn't have a need to know. In issue 175, Dusty is on charge of quarters along with Stalker and Mainframe where they find a Hurricane VTOL flying low over the Atlantic Ocean on course to make landfall at Broca Beach, and they see the Baroness is driving. In issue 181, Dusty's on perimeter duty once again. He messes up though. He lets Tobolth in with a semi truck by opening the ramp to the desert floor, except neither of them know that two Python Vipers are atop the trailer, for they have cloaking devices. These G4 Pythonization modules. Darklon was being held in the brig at the pit, and they were there to get him out. 
Starting in 183, Dusty's in benzene again, this time with Airtight and Tunnel Rat. Their cover is that they're clearing EODs near the airport. But the real story here is that the Joe team had actionable intel that Colonel Farood was trying to buy Virtual Crytron, which is a device made by Destro's Mars in which Farood wanted to buy from Darklon to upset the balance of power in the benzene Trucial Abysmia area. So they save this kid and his goats from the minefield just as Darklon decloaks his Pythonized X-30 Conquest and lands at the airport. They're out in their vehicle when they spy Baroness and Destro getting out of an armored limo outside of one of the Emir's old palaces that Farood had taken over with its junta. Little did they know that Zartan, Road Pig, Zarana, and Pale Pony were across the street drinking grape sodas. <laughs> Tunnel Rat ended up disarming the Semtex under the limo that brought Destro and Baroness up, and Destro walked into the palace, heading towards the meeting of the Colonel and Darklon, when he unleashes a flurry of wrist rockets on the palace guards. Tunnel Rat then called into the pit using the name Nikki, Ron, and Kurt instead of their code names but immediately afterwards, Tunnel Rat was abducted by Zartan. Destro's plan to get his Crytron back, not Krypton, Crytron, from his cousin fails. Then we learn that Dusty and Airtight were picked up too, but by police in the area. They're taken to a detention center, forced to shower and put on orange prison garb and put in a cell where they actually meet the former Emir of Benzene. So Hawk orders Spirit, Leatherneck, Zap, and Falcon to the aviation deck with a full combat loadout. They're going to save Dusty and his team. They take an X-19B stealth fighter piloted by Ghost Rider, whose name I remembered. So they go in and storm the compound while Airtight saves himself and Dusty from execution by using fake vomit and sneezing powder pretending it's anthrax. Dusty wants to know how he got that stuff past the strip search, thinks about it, says wait don't tell me. They all run in even as the nukes countdown continues to get lower and lower and Falcon shot by an MG through the mouth. So then Wild Bill and Lifeline show up in a tomahawk to evac everyone including Pale Pony. Later, back at the pit, Pale Ponies with Jinx and a sports car cruising around the base recklessly when they almost take out Dusty with the tail end of the car. It's kind of funny, actually. In the lead up to Snake Eye's death, though, not funny, with Serpentor returning, Dusty was part of the team to drop into Ollie's stand to recon the Revanche facility there. Covergirl told Throwdown, who's never done a combat jump before, just Sims, that he's going into the desert with Outback and Dusty and there is nobody better in that environment than those two. So disguised in Sand Viper and Red Shadows gear, they discover a base run by the Red Shadows, Black Major, and this giant-ass mech robot that's housed there. So during the op, they change into Techno, Tella, and Toxa Viper gear to blend in. The revanche mech actually heads back to the pit with Throwdown on board, and word got back to them that Snake Eyes was killed. Issue 213 ends with, with Dusty hearing that and crying. And he's just kind of been on base duty since, making brief cameos here and there, but still very much part of the active roster. Over in Action Force, Dusty first showed up in Action Force 5 at their Geneva base HQ, but he's a CO for them in the Middle Eastern Theater. There's also an arc where he falls in love with Julia Krieg, but Julia turned out to be a CG, a Cobra agent all along, and so he wanted to resign. He felt like he couldn't trust anybody anymore, but Flint talked him off that ledge. So Marvel Comics used to publish a comic book called G.I. Joe Yearbook. It came out once a year, which covered the page and the tube and everything that had happened in the year prior. Dusty showed up on the tube in 1985, so he was shown in the second issue of the yearbook, the 1986 version, but it wasn't until 1987 that he showed up in the story, which we just covered now. Speaking of animation, in the episode called The Traitor, Dusty, voiced by Neil Ross, is called Dusty Rudat instead of Ron Tater. Neil, by the way, is famous for Voltron and Humanoids, Centurion, Turians, SWAT cats, a whole bunch of other cool stuff. And so this particular episode, written by Buzz Dixon, is the first episode that made us think that Dusty had turned to help Cobra. Only it was a plot with Duke for him to be a double agent all along, but it looked like his mom's mounting medical bills and the money Cobra Commander was offering was all Dusty needed to portray his fellow Joes. But he actually first showed up in animation two years before the comic book. The miniseries was Pyramid of Darkness, where he was actually up on the space station avoiding dreadnoughts and these fatal fluffies. In 1991, a new Dusty action figure for Series 10 was given a rank upgrade, and he came with a pet coyote named Sandstorm. His card art had him still in desert BDUs, but now with a sleeveless shirt and a beret instead of his usual hooded helmet and goggles. We also own that he's licensed to operate the Rescue Hilo Retaliator, the Attack Chopper named the Locust, and the modified H1 Humvee called Hammer, the same mold for this later became the SWAT RTV. Dusty also traded in his FAMAS for a MAT-49, both French weapons, and in 2001, a black-clad Dusty figure came in an amphibious IFV called Night Rhino with the tagline, it really floats. The next year he came packaged for G.I. Joe vs. Cobra with the Sand Razor vehicle, and in 2005, his Valor vs. Venom figure came out looking like a World War I desert soldier, and his last figure in 2015 came with blue camo and the name Specialist Dusty. He came in a 
sneak attack set with Bazooka and their opponent, Firefly. Anyway, that's a wrap on this one, my friends. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, corrections, and suggestions down below. Don't forget to subscribe so you can be part of all of our videos we make, new and old. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.